this year, 2019, is the 70th anniversary of the birth of Kiltubrit Pipe Band. On this programme, we'll reflect with some of those who joined the band in 1949 and at that time would have been in their 20s. We'll hear how the band came about, the names of those who worked behind the scenes, the tunes the band played, but most of all, about everything that went in to making the Kiltubrit Band what it is today. John Joe McGurl, can you talk to us about how the Kiltubrit Pipe Band first came about? Well, we talked about having a, a, a Fife and Drum Band here, and we proposed in uh, with, uh, for Tom Doyle and Father Lynch, so I see here in the parish, proposed having uh, a pipe band, and from there on it started. So, Jackie Lee from Ahakashal, you were in the very first Kiltubber Pipe Band in 1949. Uh, that's right, yeah. I'm trying to think back now. I'm here with John Joe Farrell, and John Joe is one of the founding members of the Kiltubber Pipe Band. John Joe, can you tell us a little bit of your memories on how the Kiltubber well, Pipe Band came into existence? My memory, of course. It goes back a long way now. Uh, 1949 would be the year that it's, uh, that it's, it started. And uh, I can remember of uh, a few of the local lads uh, meet, and uh, there had been the remnants of an old band, an old Fife Drum band here. And I don't know when that went out of existence. But then there was a man there, there was a man then, a this man, that took it up and he organised and he, I never, never seen that, I didn't see that man, but uh, he put a band on the road and it was on the side, he's only for a short time now. There was a, a few of the old members still around so they were all interested in it and we discussed about uh, starting some type of a band. It started from there and of course then again it, we got as far as Tom Doyle's the public house and uh, Tom got interested in it and uh, then uh, they, they, they started, they got a, a bit uh, extra interested in it and they, uh, they started, uh, the first thing was with the form of a committee. I'm here with Pat Flynn from Gowley Kesh Carrigan, County Leitrim. Pat, you were one of those involved in the very first Kiltubrit Pipe Band in 1949. I was, yeah. And... 
Can you remember the names of those involved in the very first committee? I mean, I, I will, they may be right or wrong, I give them Kevin Kiernan, Christy Lee, Tom Doyle, Master Conopy, and John McEwan. He was very much involved. He got a safe to walk. A safe to walk, he was the first, and he was our staff lad on the band too. The men, the men, the men, to my knowledge. All them, them people, they were the, the, they formed the committee. So they're the people that, you know, we should remember when we think about the Kiltubber Pipe Band, and it's been a great success. Why wouldn't it? The all means. Yeah. So they so, would have all been involved in that first meeting which took place to put it all in place. Yes, well, they, they did. They had, uh, when they got organised, you see, they had uh, their own meeting, meeting, you see. There was another very, very um, important man on it was Sergeant Monaghan. He was a sergeant in Cash Caricat. Sergeant Monaghan had been a sergeant in Baltimore before that. And during that time, they had a Piper's Band in Baltimore, the, for the old Forester's Piper's Band. And uh, Sean, there was a, the bandmaster that trained him, he was Sean Donahue from Ballyshannon. So he was a great asset to the, to the committee, do you see. Marie Monaghan, we just heard about Sergeant Monaghan, and he was your dad. Yes, and... Uh, he was a uh, sergeant in, in uh, Ballinamore and then he was transferred to Kesh Carrigan and that's where I lived in Kesh Carrigan, the barracks in Kesh. But um, he was, uh, there were five guards in the station at that time in Kesh and uh, as we called it and then uh, it of course it dwindled afterwards. I think by the time John Donoghue came to it there were only one left. <laughs> he used to say, "It it t- it took it only took one carry man to to man the whole lot." <laughs> but uh, he was uh, seemingly. Seem- seem- he- he- I don't know much about him taking part in uh, playing the bagpipes, but I have an old, very old photograph of him uh, dressed in the kilts. And seemingly, it must be when he was in Fermanagh or when he was in Edgerney that there was a band there and he was playing the pipes there. That's all I know about it. They, they hadn't decided on what type of band. There was going to be a band formed anyway. No, the first thing was a trailer. That's right. That's, I, 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 I do forget it. I do forget it. The first thing would be a, a, a trailer. So, you see, uh, Sergeant Monaghan, do you see, mentioned about this, Sean Donoghue from Ballyshanna, he was a good bandmaster. He trained any type of a band. And he used to come up, he used to come up on the bus to Shambo, and then we had to arrange transport for to bring him out to the Kintobert. And uh, he'd uh, spend the night uh, training the boys, or to uh, be a meeting in the beginning, to know what type of band, and I didn't make any odds, it had to be a piper, brass and reed, fife and drum. He trained us anyway, he was really a bandmaster. The house, we had arranged for him to stop in a house near hand there, uh, overnight. Sean Dunham, yeah, from Donegal. Yeah, he boarded in the neighbor's house. And then he had to walk back to, to get to Ballyshannon on the bus again. Was there much training involved? Oh, there was. I wonder. Oh, I we, we spent um, a couple of nights per week. You see, the loft up there. Yeah, uh, in the Granary Loft, at the back of Doyle's pub. That's what the animal done. It wasn't. It was big enough for us to train the band. There's, it was. It was. It was real big. It was, it was just a, like a bar, you know, a good size. We used to practice <coughs> below. Uh, on a Saturday night below in uh, Doyle's at Hong Kong Mrs Doyle was very interested in the music and she used to put us right or give us a hand out of new tunes and that and was that a, the, the Doyle's was that a post office at the time oh no no that would be a different was no there... no that's different the post office was here at the station and I said the week 
a night in the week. And how long would one of those training sessions last? Well, it last about two hours. Oh, it could, it could be a couple of hours at night, a big crowd. And would all 21 of the band be there? Ah, they would. But have some refreshment too, which was very hard to get them to come out. And uh, we'd have to practice uh, with the practice chanter. And then uh, when you learn a tune on the practice chanter, then you went on then to the pipes, three drone Scotch Highland pipes. That's what they were. That's, that's what we played. When they, are, when they agreed on getting Sean Donahue, he agreed, he agreed to, to, to train a band. And then another... Lady, I'm not going to say anything about her. Jackie Lee will tell you more about her. Um, she would be a clerk in, in, in the post office in, in the Lees. And she was a native of Bally Shannon and knew Sean Dunno. So, you see, that was a little help too. Uh, she came from Lissa Holly, Bally Shannon, County Donegal. After leaving school, she came here. And uh, she uh, told us uh, about the, the bands down there and gave us kind of a, a history of uh, and some information about pipe bands from Barry Shannon. And that's how we got into it here in Kil- Kiltobert. Can you tell us who she was? She was Eva McCauley and she married Joe Mooney. And after coming here, she met Joe Mooney in Drumshambo and eventually then they got married and then Pascal Mooney then is their son you know Pascal and Radio yeah. Aaron is their son and um, so Eva Mooney would have worked here in the shop at that time after leaving school she, she came here and she had um, she knew about the bands down in in, uh, in Donegal and she knew Sean Donohoe and, and she knew Sean Donohoe yeah he was in a pipe band down there, and uh, he, he that got the band off the ground. Yeah. And then we're on, on our own then after that. That's how we got to know a bit about the pipes and that. But during uh, the course, you see, they did the contact to Sean Dunham, and he agreed for to train a band. We didn't know what type of a band. <laughs> so he must have. There must be meetings in between that I, that I can't rem- memorise. But uh, they did, they arranged and they were for, uh, to for, for uh, a meeting how they were going to pick a Piper's band because everyone in the parish wanted to be on the band. But all the ones were 12 Pipers. And then, of course, there'd be uh, four, six, seven drummers, like, between all. But uh, they, uh, they, they, uh, they, they, they called the meeting, anyway. Oh, the band off below, it was jammed to the very door. When we started first, uh, uh, the first night for the band, it was going to start to see it. There was over 70 people in it. Young and old, and it was a horrid look at everyone <laughs> blowing with uh, face of the wall, blowing to hear themselves. <laughs> well, eventually, it, uh, and everyone wanted to be on the band. Everyone wanted to be on the band. Oh, there was there was aged men, there was aged men that came and was disappointed to thought they were on the band. Oh no, there was there was queer competition to get her for the first. For the first night. Oh, but uh, all Sean Donahoe could do was, he said that he he gave them three tunes. All that was uh, all that was interested in pipes, he gave them three tunes, and uh, then he'd have a test uh, at some time after, and he'd pick his twelve pipers out of it. And what about the band members then? Who who was on the band? The front line, Jackie Lee, Liam Collier and Bernie Joe Gilmer. Sean Michonne. John Joe McGill. John Joe Farrell. And John Joe Redahan from Crummy. And John Joe McQueenie from Crummy. And Tommy Cohen. Liam Cullen. 
Jim Lear. Condiati. Top Joe Burton. Jim Collin. Richie Early and Johnny Burton. Tommy Mulvey. Myself. Pat Finn. What was your own role in the band at the time? I was a piper. Yeah. Yeah, I was a piper. So then, do you see, <coughs> if you wanted to be a piper, I don't know, I think you had to buy the chanter. You got a chanter to the, for to learn the three tunes. I think it was 12 pipers, four side drums, two tenor drums, and one bass drum in the band. Yeah, there was 12 pipers, yeah, and there was um, four side drums, two tenor drums, and the bass drum. That was uh, the number of... Uh, members of the band? Yeah. Now, you got the three tunes. The first one was Crusader. Oh, Crusader. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. The Crusader. The Crusaders was a four, four time march tune. Strictly march tune. The next one was Nora Krina. No, Nora Krina, I'm going to tell you. Nora Krina was a 68 time, per time tune. A jig. I can revise them now, like I say, as you mention them. But uh, I just lost track of them. And more tunes are me tunes, like I say, like, um, I, I have marching tunes, that's what they were. I have marching tunes, the ones we played. And then the other one was the Red Castle, which was, I think, the 4 4 tune. And the, yeah, I tell the fourth one, the Mountains of Power Eye. Oh, God. The Mountains of Pomeroy, you can write it that one too. The Mountains of Pomeroy, that was another one. They were, you know, they were, they were all Scottish students. And you know, they were, they were hard learned, but they hadn't an idea that here. Now the band is playing now, it's all little local ears to have. And, uh, but the other ones was quite more point music. Which was difficult to look for. That was another yeah. good... Yeah. So and there's no national anthem. Yeah, and we're for football matches. We had no national anthem too. So you got your four tunes, and uh, after some length of time, I don't know what our meetings, there were no meetings in between. Uh, the one we with the committee, we were with the member. Ah, uh, we, were, we were squeaking on this chapter and it was hard played, and trying to learn the tunes, and the night was appointed, and the case was jammed out. The mall with a practice chanter. And there was fellas that knew the tunes, and so when they went to play, their fingers went everywhere. And can you recall where the instruments would have come from then for the first band? Trollers, I think it's Dublin over they think it's just in Cork. I, I, I came back to that show, but I think it's called Crowley's. And I suppose then another part of the the Kiltobra Pipe Band is the name. How did that come into be in existence then? Did was that something that went to a vote at the meeting, or how did that come about? Ah, uh, no, we never knew. I could never know how that. There never was any discussion about the names of Kiltobra, Saint Bridget's. This is our church is Saint Bridget's, do you see, and it's. St. Bridges Piper's Band, Kiltobbers. That's what was through the one is. And then, of yeah. course, the the uniform that oh, well, is that part was, of it. Oh, that was later on. The middle of the kit, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the first uniforms, oh, we had the ladies' committee. The uniforms was made above in Mohan, and the skirts was the local committee, women. Made them. They had to wear to make it Switch their money. The ladies committee, they were made locally. There was a while, well, the kilt. There was, uh, there was, there was seven yards of material in the kilt. To, to pick the drummers in. <laughs> there was an old bin. There was an old bin and there was forums there for sitting on. And I knew of a couple of old men and they bit the corners of the, fo- the forum with their drumsticks trying to learn the beats. And from when the discussions first started then to the band starting to practice, how long would that have been? Well, it was at 48. We started about uh, in September 48 and we went out in May, May 49. We marched from Kish out to Lahig. 
and play. I said, oh, I'll kill Tuggers was all they needed here, listen. It was something, you know, there was no such a thing as a pipe band about. It was a big thing, you know. Then the first of all, first of all, was in the Lahim. An open day in Lahim. I think that was the first uh, public appearance of the Kiltober Pipe Band. Oh, well, it was on the, the band of Bottle Lahim. That was the first out in a band hand. But then, who oh, went on later then? We got to dinner, we got pipes in later on. And, uh, you know, at that time, it's easy learning pipes though because the, it's all the uh, uh, plastic reeds. At that time, it was cane reeds, and it was harder, they're harder kept in tune. And in sheepskin bags, there were sheepskin bags, and a bag can, could burst. This too. And in, in hot weather, the hell wouldn't, wouldn't fill them. You know, yeah. you'd have to keep them, uh, see, keep them seasoned, you see, with olive oil and different things. But I can mind, I can mind to a, when we got a set of pipes, ah, oh, we were, we were, we were elected. Yes. Got a set of pipes, we couldn't get them filled, and we had uh, lots of trouble. And there was a house next door up here, with a great killing house. And then you brought the pipes with you at night, do you see? And you were blowing them, and you travelled, and you know, and that was a killing house up here. And there was an old woman in it. And when you blew, you know, they're very loud. They're yes. very loud in the house. And then we couldn't play. And there could be two or three with pipes there, Pat Rosevel, you, Holder, and me. But uh, the woman, oh, with the Chris, the woman couldn't stand the night, you see, and she used to, uh, then she was funny, she used to open the door, and if you, if you see them round the kitchen with a twig to try to get us out. <laughs> <laughs> now, up until you join in the pipe band, Pat. Did you ever play an instrument before that? No. No. Up no. until that? No. 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 But they were right on people, on those uh, members that were going to stay. They went there right on them, the, the committee. Because there was no saying a man on him going to England or America. They were right that, they, they were right on them more than But those fellas then at that time, you see, in the summertime, you'd be at hay, and it used to be very, if a good day, oh no, you wouldn't be, you'd have to be. But, but I knew a fellas, if there was a band out, no, you'd go, you'd, you'd go to it. And yeah. when, when the band started up then, how long did it take to get the band, we'll say, to different events that were taking place around, okay. around the area? There was a lot of uh, local events, you see. There was a lot of local events. Football matches, and then you see there was there was uh, the Ariox and Fishes and all that type of thing. You see. And is there any of those events that stick out in your mind now, as you think back to them and uh, perform? No, the the, the the biggest uh, the one of the biggest events in my time now was in Cavan Town, and that was the Owen Row celebrations. The Owen Row celebrations. And I, I, I think, I don't know what county in the north, it was at Armagh or it. And uh, they said there was many parishes in it, but had a band to represent the video. There was over a hundred bands in it. We were one of the best bands here, you know, at that time. Yeah. We were. And uh, meanwhile, we put up in the Royal, but uh, we paraded the town, and then we had to. We were told we were sorted out outside the town to a big field, and each band was their band, their place was marked, you see. Mm. And it was, a, it was a great sight, you see. They were all in uniform, you see. So that was a motto, and I tell you what was that night in? There was a military tattoo that night. And of course, at that time, we thought it was great, you see. It was really good. It was uh, done by the army. Done by all the old, the old, old celebrations, you see. Yeah. That would be one of the biggest events that we had. It'd be heavy when you be carrying. It would be very heavy. And often, at a commemoration, we often had our staff, they'd be over a mile. You know, 
So I play here at Sound whenever I get the same we got to the graveyard work with us. <laughs> All the other ones then of course another great one was the the uh character challenge in the 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 on the challenge the regular. And then for yourself, how long did you spend in that band? I, 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 twenty or twenty five years what I tell you, I got her <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I uh, I was 25 years anyway. I would be 25 years. I was a good many years in it. I was a good many years in it. Yeah. Yeah. I say I'd be the old, one of the oldest members to leave it. I, mean, I say that. And when you started, how did you travel around to the to the different events? Because oh, 1949 was a different, a yeah, different no, period. Yeah. Low cars, we often got free transport. Now, a free, the different events in Carrick. That generally was free transport. I said, be, <coughs> did be men that owned the said cars. That just, some, uh, the, the brother sports, though. That was a, a great event in Carrick at the in the year. And I think there's a famous photograph of you on a, on a bike. In uniform. <laughs> See her, no. And uh, you know where you were, where you were heading off to that day? Yeah. The early years, it was every Sunday. Then we played at St. Patrick's Day parades in Sligo and uh, Dublin and different places. And we went abroad in England. In Birmingham? In Birmingham, England. And uh, There's a big well, Irish contingent in Birmingham... And yeah, there would be a lot there. Yeah, a lot of uh, Irish people and people from our parish, from Kiltober Parish. Oh, Spain, and we played in um, we played in New York. That was at the later years of the uh, the the sport is there. Uh, is that what about seventy five or something? It was St Patrick's Day parade. I think it was in New York. Yeah, can you recall that time when you played in America? How would you have travelled to it? Was it by boat or plane? No, by plane. And was it a St. Patrick's Day parade? St. Patrick's Day parade, yeah. And people that were maybe they were maybe home in maybe 30 years and used to love to hear the Kiltober pipe band playing for sure. Patrick's Day. It was a big one, so it was. That was a... Uh, uh, Patrick's Day parade in New York would be the biggest. That would be the, the biggest. And it was a, a nice one to get. Uh, it was, and um, it was lovely to be marching along... Fifth Avenue and hearing all these up Kiltubbers and up Leeds from the yeah. ones that weren't home maybe in 30 years yeah. and they used to love to hear us and we loved to hear them and then locally then in Carrick and the towns in the, in the county. So it's every son. Of course our biggest event was the winning of the Thomas Ash Memorial Cup in Sligo. Uh, we won the Thomas Ash Memorial Cup in Sligo and what did that include? What did you have to do that time as part of that? We don't, and, and um, I can't remember all the any, uh, other bands uh, uh, in opposition they were competing at that time. I think there were sort of two or three. Sligo had a sort of a band like that. But uh, we were down and we, and we played and we won in three uh, successive seasons. I remember marching to Sligo, through the town of Sligo. Uh, I don't know what time of the year that was now. I'm trying to think. At the Fish in Sligo, we went in for individual. The band took part and got first prize a couple of years at the Fish in Sligo. And some of us went in then for individual piping as well. And uh, we got first, I think. And we got a second and a third. There was three or four of us went in for the solar piping. It was a good achiever. We had good opposition. And uh, the, we won it. The three years in succession, we won the cup out. This is the Thomas Ash. The Thomas Ash Memorial Cup. We won it out. We won it the three years, you see. And you got to keep the cup then? I, we don't know where the cup is. That's the worst of it. Yeah. But anyway, that's another story. Yeah. They just sort of fell through what they were going talking about selling the instruments again. And they got together to get a rare money for it. So, uh, the, 
So the answer to the one was the biggest f- f- thing we had. So what would what would have been done for that? For the raising of, I suppose, well, money the, for the first, the, were, the, well, the first big money ever we got was a dance below in Fairyville. There was a cowboy man came home from America and he built this. He bought these army huts and set up a big hall. And there was dreadful crowds in it. And we had bus loads in it. Jeez, it was loaded. The back of the bus was hit on the ground with the oil oh, that was on it. And what would have been taking place there? Was it like a Cayley or something? Oh, that, that's all. And there, there was a first time there was a bar, was here. We took about £200 out of it, which was a lot of money. It was for half. And what time frame would we be talking? Would it be the early fifties at that stage? Oh, it, w- it would be. And that would have been that would have been real money. Oh, it was. It was really hard to get money. But um, there's so the one thing to be said about it that back down the years, the whole thing hinged on two or hardly three people to keep it going. We had we had great men down the line now. And one of the best men, PJ Mahon up here. We have PJ Mahon, who was a great help. I would have joined the band in uh, sort of 62, 63, but I officially would have gone on to the band in 64 on my first outing. And I um, suppose I've been on it ever since, basically. I've seen the highs and lows and the Tough days, the hard days, and the days when it was hard to get numbers. And uh, we've maintained um, a good training system down the years. And we've always had a pool of young people coming on doing uh, piping and and drumming. So they they train them all out themselves. There's no trainer coming in. So it's all passed down from from 1949 that's still going. Basically, the pipe and shooter, that would be Carl Harris at the minute. As time went on, we learned a few new tunes and we kind of stick with the one uh, set of tunes practically all the time because, um, well, it it, it, it gets... The the more selections you have, the more difficult it is to... uh, maintain the, the standard of piping and tunes when you're out on parade. Uh, basically, most of our tunes will be marching tunes with a few jigs and horn pipes and stuff like that mixed in as well. Obviously, we have Our On The V and then we have uh, Faith Of Our Fathers is another tune. and We have Lovely Leach, I mean, we don't play it often, enough, but maybe for uh, 2019, we'd better revive that one because we're 70 years on the road. And, to be one to have, you know. Playing outside of churches, an old tradition. Yeah, an old tradition in Kiltrubert used to be, the band used to play uh, once a year outside of uh, Rantog and Kiltrubert, and um, uh, it seems to have died off a wee bit uh, for some reason or other, but I, I mean, we, we've did it a few years back there again, you know. Um, I, I, I can see it as something we should be doing, you know, maybe on a regular basis every year, do it at least once a year, you know. And you never know, maybe during the rest of this year, we're in March now, so it's a bit to go until we get to the end of the year. But you never know, the band might pop up someplace along the way. Ah, well, it'll definitely pop up somewhere this year because uh, this being the 70th anniversary, um, we're we're due to give a, a recital local at least, you know. In 1972, girls were introduced to the band as an all male outfit at that time and um, we had to move with the times a bit and the you know I suppose necessity forced it as well because membership and numbers and that and uh, my, my two sisters joined in 1972 and they started a, a trend that um, girls came out of the band then uh, uh, down the years and the former major part of the band now the girls there would be the, the half and half at least you know So PJ in here we're in the room where you train and you've got one of the drums and can you explain to us how you do play these well what you're looking at here Michael is, is what's called a practice pad a drum pad and it has the same effect as the drum but it, it it's it's what you practice on and do your training on before you go to the drum and basically what you do is 
first thing you learn is how to hold the shoe sticks. So basically with a snare drum it's right hand over the right stick and left hand is under the left stick. So as you can see there that's the angle. Because your your drum is, snow, is slung on your side for drumming normally. Even though they're a bit out front now with the new um, slings that we have. So the first thing you learn is what's called the two taps with the right hand, two with the left, right, and that develops into And I know now the sound from that, but maybe just on the drum that you would use on the day. I know this might be a little bit loud, so we'll stand back a little bit and try and capture a little bit of this. It's a, a lovely sound, this drum, when you hear it in the in the band on, on any day. Yeah, well, I can, I can just do that on, on, on the drum as well, but it'll be obviously a bit louder and sharper. That's it, that's, that's it, basically, that's to start with, and there's other rhythms that we learn then, and uh, uh, it, it, it takes a full winter of training, if not two. And there's a few different drums then in this room. Over here we can see uh, it's a bigger drum. Yeah, that's the bass drum, that's the drum now that uh, current bass drummer Kevin Keeney would play. You, you go on your daily every night at that time. Well, you, you never went without your pipes. And uh, I know though the house went over the road here, <coughs> and I'd go out and I'd, 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 I'd see just more practicing these as well. Yeah. But they played their tunes. And it all stood to eat then now, when you went to do these I, events. I can, I can remember we had a little field with crap in it, potatoes, here above. And there was another fella down the road, Tommy Shaw, and he was a piper. And he had a field with crap in it, and it was the annual war and view of one another, but it wouldn't be the way. And I had my pipes with me, and he had his pipes with him. And every ridge we'd feel, when you come up to the top, you took up your pipes and you tell it's own. <laughs> he done the same. And at that time, there used to be a lot of there used to be a lot of cyclers going the road, and it was a very, un very unusual DC for that. I waited out, I had potatoes that feed along the lane, and had, I had the chanter. You had to learn out of the chanter first, and to sit down and add to them and have a tune. <laughs> oh, it was a great novelty at that time, you know. And before. Would you have played an instrument at all no. before no. the the no. the band? Never, no. just so, and so it was all f if, new. So yeah, it was to you. They were all new. Yeah, no, they were all new from the start. So that was a bit of extra training going in. That's all as well. Uh, along with the the sports. Ah, but so good. it was. It it came first the, the band at that time, and then. The thing about it was, you see, that was 1949 when it started. Leading up to that, you see, you hadn't very much. You hadn't, because, because you know, 1950 was a, a very bad year, you know, for everything. And uh, any harm to ask you uh, what age you would have been when you joined the band? Or when you would have went along to those meetings? Ah, uh, no, sir, it would be. Ah, uh, no, it would be under 20, anyway. Yeah. I would. Uh, I was, um, let's see, it was a teenager, like, <laughs> and then I was in it from that middle age, I suppose, I was a good while playing at the band altogether. <laughs> Just 
Twenties, I was in around twenties. Yeah, yeah, I'd say, I'd say so. Yeah. And when you look back, a happy, a happy time. Well, it was more, more than enjoyable, more than enjoyable. That's what I said. I was uh, twenty-two or twenty-three. And would anybody ever have played on the band from outside the area? Well, no, not at all. Sean Wheat was the only one that came on. And where would Sean have come from? From Origna, Sean was from Origna. And what would he have played? He played a drum. Played a drum. And he's been a wonderful asset to us down the years. He's a, he's a great character. He plays the bower on outside of uh, this, and uh, he's a great man for the cultists and all the sessions. And Sean has been wonderful. He's a, a great way with youngsters, and uh, y- you have to have that side of it as well. You have to have people who, who, who make it fun to be at, you know, when you're out or when you're practising. Sean, you were the only man from Roscommon in the band. The only man from Roscommon played, played with Leitrim, huh? The were lovely little kid. Bunch of boys and girls, they never I had the best great company with them all down through the year. And they said, Bunch, you couldn't be out of language for a year, for a year. Sean, you're still in the band? Yes, I'm still in the band. I had, um, well, I had with them in 1975. And I'm still with them all down through the year. And I had an operation in, in 2016. I had a knee replacement, and I was only with them twice or three times mm-hmm. since because it's not, as I say, there's no knee as good as your own. Because PG and me, it doesn't be there. In Kilturbridge that year, and PG Meehan was young, that going to go both got some selling tickets, and he asked me, would it be interested in joining the band? So I said, I'd give it a go. So I now remember, we had a meeting one night, and uh, Michael Kilmerton, Michael Kilmerton was retired, and Michael was on the tinner zone. So Michael left me, so I'm in the band ever since. So I joined up with the whole, I had a band, there was Dan Gatton's in it, lads and lasses, so all, a lovely county, but all down through the years. You couldn't beat them. And yeah. what was your instrument then? Was it the drum? It was a tinner drum. There was a tinner drum and there was a lassie from Kish Carrigan, Dolores Morton. I left her. There was another lassie from, um, from Kiltorbert, um, uh, Ola Fertel. I left her too, so I did. And um, there was a no, there was fierce pack with the door training and when Leith and Miller's coming in, they'd be playing, you know, you know the shlag and you go on, you know, you've heard what happens, eh? Yeah. Eh? But they just had great with them in London and beyond in Scotland and Birmingham and all over with them. What in America in 1988, I think, was in America, or beyond for 12, for 12 days, was where they were, were, um, were on the, what, the, the, the Patrick's Day Parade. It was brilliant, so it was. Uh, you know, off there with a cousin, too, Thomas Murray, he was there, too, so he was there. We well, had a mighty, a mighty time out. And. How was music in your life up to joining the band? Well, I loved music all the time. Me, mo- me mother, God bless you, used to play the melodeon. And uh, I bought a banjo one time, and I could get a bit of, I could get a foot, bit, bit of the bat and ram on it. So it broke anyways, and of course, like everything else, I opened up the phone, you know, you know, you know, you know so that's finished that. And so there, there was a, a pipe band in Rigna here years and years ago. There's a great pipe band here, and there was crowd up that there is all Collins that was following the Massey Collins. And Johnny Massey was him, that, that and me was on the kitchen drum. When you look back to, we'd say, the Kiltubra Pipe Band, Sean, when they started in 1949, yeah. and we're now at the 70th anniversary, That's right. it's a big occasion. It is, it is. They were great to keep it going, I have to say that, fair play to them. They kept it going all down through the years, through thick and thin. I remember Jack Lee and John Joffey, I remember John Joffey was on the big drum, eh? I don't remember them coming. They, they, I don't remember them. They stood out in the line. You see them in them shambles football matches and festivals, you know, years and years ago. Aye. You play, like the uniform, so. Yeah. Aye. And the spats. We used to spats one time, too. They look great, you know, years what ago. What were the spats? They were a white. They came up halfway up in your leg, you know, a white cover over your show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and do they not do that now? It's just no, the sock. It's just the sock now, but I think they're going to get, they're, they're, they're on about uh, getting a new outfit, you know, for the band. So I'm here with Kevin Keeney. What's your role in the band at the moment? Uh, I'm the chairman at the moment in the band, but um, um, I play the bass drum uh, in the band. Uh, I've, I've played the, the uh, snare drums before, and now I play the bass. So I'm involved in the band now since around 1990. So I have a few years under the belt with the, with the band. So I'm... I'm, uh, I'm there a while. Yesterday for St. Patrick's Day 2019 and the 70th anniversary of the Kiltubbert Pipe Band, 
The Kiltupper Pipe Band played at numerous events around the region. And there was one or two new additions to this year's lineup. That's correct, yeah. We had uh, Keane and Kira Ferry, who are grandchildren of uh, Carl Harris. And Carl has been a long, lifelong member of the band, and Carl's brother, Brendan, uh, was a member of the band also. So it's a, it's a lovely tradition to see um, grandchildren of past members coming up in, in the ranks. So it's fantastic to see the band striving forward in 70 years uh, in existence. So we're, hopefully we're going to have some celebrations in September. Now, the dates, uh, exact dates and exact venue is yet to be decided, but we're certainly going to have a good time on uh, September and enjoy the celebrations of the event. The one good thing about the band is everybody gets a part to play. Everybody has, a, has a, something to say. You know, There's no decision made by one person. It's a collective. It's always collective. So it's great. Uh, everyone gets a say in what we do and where we go and things like that. So it's, it's great. And then <coughs> the staff man at the moment is staff Desi is Foley. The good, the good Desi Foley, yes. Desi is our, our, our front man, leads the band, shows us where to go and tells us when to stop, tells us when to start. So, um, yeah. Des, and Des, Des, and Des, the uh, staff man, he'd have a, a unique when he's out in front. He's got he has a unique staff, yeah. We actually we actually commissioned a new staff there uh, uh, for, for the 1949, for the 70th anniversary. We've commissioned a new staff. It's... Um, it's been, it was made actually in India, uh, handmade, um, and Desi has that now, so we'll have that uh, going forward for the next 70 years, hopefully. Kevin, in 1949, one of the members had two important roles that day. That's correct, Mike, yeah. Uh, in 1949, yeah, there was a Connacht final held, uh, Leeds were playing in the Connacht final, and um, on that day, um, a man by the name of Sean Rutledge was playing on the county team, but he also was a member of the pipe band on that same, that same occasion, so... He, uh, he was playing the football and we were playing the tunes. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, Leeds were not successful on that day. And then just when we look behind us here, there's a lovely, I suppose, logo on the wall and it's remembering the 1949 year as well. The banner, we actually we got that made actually recently as well by a company in uh, Drumshambo. Sign, Sign Warehouse. Sign Warehouse, correct, yeah. Two, uh, the, the two lads there made that for us and um, it just adds a bit of colour on the front of the band and uh, just uh, says who we are and where we're from. Kevin Feeney and the uh, rest of the team here would have been involved in uh, putting that together and agreeing on the design of it. Uh, that, through the various social media again, would have been sent out to everyone for their opinion on it, uh, different versions of it. That was the agreed one and that's, it looks well, actually, it's very nice. And, it does, uh, and we can see the St Bridget's Cross here yeah, in yeah. the middle. And, and three of the 1949 lads carried that in cash two years ago at a parade. John Joe Farrell, John Joe McGurton and the late John Joe Redican. Yeah. So that, that was a nice day to have. Uh, that was his first day out, actually. And it's Kiltubber Pipe Band, County Leitrim, founded 1949. That's it, in a nutshell. That's it. And I suppose as we reflect on the 1949 band, would you have a message for them listening? Pat Flynn, Jackie Lee, John Joe McGurl and John yeah, Joe Farrell. Absolutely. Farrick. Well, I'd just, like to, I'd just like to thank them for sowing the seed um, and uh, this wonderful tradition that we have today. And all I can say is I hope that um, we can keep the tradition alive, keep it, keep it going strong as ever. And, um, and thanks very much, lads. Well done. Kevin Keeney, chairman of Kiltubber Pipe Band. Thanks very much. Thanks, Mike. Thanks indeed. And John Joe, yeah. would you have any message for the present members of the Kiltubber Pipe Band as we celebrate the 70th anniversary of the band? Well, the only, the only thing I can say about it that uh, the young people today is great that they still have there's such an interest in the band, seeing that there's so many interests, um, that they have so, so much you know, in this day and, uh, and age. And seeing that then, of course, there is, there is a, a good deal to be said for those couple of fellas down the line that has kept they kept uh, organising, we kept them organising and getting new recruits and has put a lot in it. They have put a lot, a lot in it down the years. So, as an old member, I think that is all I have to say. I'm still glad to see it on the road. Well, they're doing very well at the present time. All I would wish them was a very best look in their outings. It's the only thing 
they have in the parish, the men's living. Yeah, out from football, that's in the band, yeah. The, the main thing with the band would be to have a practice. The band would nearly want to have a practice once a week because uh, uh, if you didn't practice, you'd be missing notes and that type of thing. So by practicing once a week, uh, the band then would be, there'd be no mistakes made. There were, you know, there'd be uh, geared up then for outings. But it's great to see it going for so long. The start of the van above and all of us at the same time, and it only lasted a couple of years. The same train or at all. And hopefully it'll keep going. I hope it'll keep going, pass on to the younger crowd. I have three grandchildren as well, two boys and a girl, two, two, piper, two drubber, pipers and one drummer. So, so they'll be out of it. They're keeping it in the family. Keeping it in the family, yeah.